What's up guys? Welcome to Vintage Genetics once again in Hunter Fence Fit Gym where it's all about classic bodybuilding. We are back in the Netherlands from the USA from the Classic Physique Olympia experience. I learned a lot so this will be the time to improve upon any weaknesses I saw in the show. And today is going to be a bag day so we're going to start out with a pull down variation that looks like kind of a row and a pull down combination so let's just do it and by the way wearing the new tracksuit top available on vintagegenetics.com thank you very much for the incredible support but let's do this all right guys so this is the first workout back on home soil in this 100 percent fit gym and it's gonna be a back workout because I like to start the entire workout sequence with the back. After the back we train the chest, then the legs, which of course will be the biggest priority, but I already trained the legs in the USA. Didn't record that, but of course whenever you're doing a contest prep, the legs is the muscle group you haven't trained for the longest time. So I just did some legs before hopping on the airplane in at the USA Orlando in Iron Religion Gym. It was quite an awesome leg workout and obviously I didn't go to failure at all because you don't want to, you know, dig yourself a hole that's too deep right after the prep because I do experience, you know, weakness overall in terms of how many poundages you're used to doing before the prep. If you compare that to do what you're doing now, it's a lot less. But you don't want to look at that. What you want to look at is your starting point now and then get stronger every single time because now the food will be higher and higher, so strength will increase regardless if you're doing it correctly and with correctly I mean correct form as you see right here since this is the first working set so this is the heaviest weight all the sets you just saw before doing this one were warm-ups and warm-ups are not supposed to fatigue you are not supposed to take anything away from the sets I'm doing right now which is the working sets so working set number one is usually the heaviest set because then you're still the freshest. You haven't expended any energy on any harder sets before since you only did warm ups. But the second working set I'm doing here is a bit lighter. So that is a bit higher volume, so a bit higher rep range with a lighter weight because what you want to do to grow on each and every muscle fiber level is to train yourself at every rep range, just as many rep ranges as possible. However, we know that a very low rep ranges don't really you know, contribute to muscle growth and very high rep ranges, it becomes difficult to stay focused on the muscle group you're training because there's a lot of lactic acid it build up a lot of other muscle groups that want to work and oxygen demand starts to become a problem such as doing 20 30 rep back squats for example just try to do it with perfect form actually going to failure on the muscle instead of the oxygen demand so what i like to do is working set number one is 8 to 12 reps and working set number two is 15 to 20 reps so with the wide grip pull down i just did the first one was around the 10 to 12 rep and the second one was at least 15 reps making sure i hit those two rep ranges and that's what i'm going to do for every single workout for almost every exercise as well now this one the seated row using the same attachment as the pull down variation i just love this attachment and uh, it allows me to really target that's little dexter in the background but it allows me to target the back really well in the middle back so the real back thickness the wider the grip of course with a limit if it's too wide you won't be able to contract it properly but the wider the grip usually from going from very narrow to this width the wider it is the better you're able to contract the uh, middle back and the rhomboids because you get more range of motion that way so this is my working set i'm using a gym pin attached to the stack to add another five kilogram plate to the stack because to me, rowing movements are a bit easier than pull down movements and uh, it just feels great to be able to do this with this weight. With the power of Dexter, let's do this. So that was little Dexter, our son. Um, 
he believe I think he is 15 weeks old and this Friday he'll be 16 weeks old so time flies pretty quickly but still he's very young at the same time as well and being away for three weeks that means you missed quite a lot of you know big percentage of his entire lifespan so you know you kind of miss your family quite a lot when you're gone for three weeks so very happy to be home again and uh, this is working set number two a bit more reps achieved and working set number two because you are doing more reps you have to do less weight so the weight here is only decreased minimally because you know right now the strength is at a funny place in reality the strength is higher but it's because of the fatigue of the prep you know the jet lag because literally this is one day later after i arrived in the netherlands so you got the jet lag you still got you know fullness missing because i didn't have a cheat meal yet at all just a little treat here and there but not a huge cheat meal like i normally would have after a contest but now i want to do it differently because christmas is around the corner tomorrow actually and i'm going to start uh, you know, enjoying myself right there, which is to me a much better way than to immediately go all out right after the show and not enjoy having a good shape uh, pretty much right away. But anyway, this next movement is the Smith Machine uh, Barbell Row. You know, you have a bent over row and a barbell row. I call this the barbell row because I'm still in more of an upright position. And the bent over row would truly be with your upper body parallel to the floor. But if I do that variation, you can do a lot less weight. And my goal is to truly use a lot of weight to target the muscle I want to train. And especially the back or the legs need a lot of weight for me to grow. In my pictures of the Classic Physique Olympia I competed in of this year, you can truly see that uh, I added a lot of, of mass in pretty much every muscle group, but especially the legs and the back. And that's because the past year I've been training them nice and heavy. So my goal is to go as heavy as I possibly can to make the back as thick and wide as possible along with of course the hamstrings the adductors the rest of the legs and the rest of the body but priorities need to be made and for me it truly is the hamstrings the adductors which is the inner thighs and uh, the back can never be big enough but the legs is truly the biggest uh, thing i want to work on but uh, if you have a big back, if you turn around, it looks amazing regardless. So I just did the first working set. And now it's time for working set number two. A bit more reps. And uh, also, if you're going a bit too heavy on the first working set, sometimes your form can lag just a little bit. You then have the second working set to correct your form because it's less weight. So then you're you know, not as afraid or nervous about hitting the weight of just being able to hit those reps you did previously. Now you can focus more on the perfect form, perfect contraction, perfect stretch. And by the way, my perfect form here is, is um, going below the knees and then going all the way up, feeling the contraction in the lower lats and also the middle back. If I feel that, that means it's perfect form. <laughs> so yeah that happens sometimes when uh, you're not used to your own equipment anymore but uh, this next exercise is an amazing one as well because in this gym we don't have many machines that our chest supported so all of the moves i just did were you know war machine movements but at the same time, a bit more free movements compared to a movement like this. Because here, you're able to push your upper body against the pad of this bench, allowing to squeeze a bit further. That is the big benefit of exercises like this. I'm allowed, I'm able to keep my elbows all the way to the back, to really squeeze all the way to the back, 
without anything happening to uh, you know have to stabilize my core or contracting my abs or anything to keep upright because this bench seat is right here this bench pad allowing me to keep in position and that allows me to drive my elbows further back so if you have any trouble contracting the back in that way i would definitely urge you to try machines with a chest pad to allow you to drive your elbows further back allowing for an even uh, more extreme shortening of the back muscles because trust me guys if you want a thicker bigger better more detailed back it's not only about the stretch it's especially actually about the contraction and the contraction means that you have to shorten the muscle as much as possible because the shoulder the shorter it is the better the contraction is, the more those muscle fibers are slid into each other. And the better that is, the better the entire stretch will be. It's kind of a synergy. The better the stretch, the better the contraction. And the better the contraction, the better the stretch. So you just want to maximize that full range of motion. And also remember what I'm about to say now. If you can't fully shorten those back muscles, the weight is too heavy. Despite how good it might feel to you, to your mind-muscle connection, it will be too heavy if you can't fully shorten the back muscles because that is what causes muscle growth in the back. That's what I've learned and that's where most of my progress has come from because I used to believe, and you can watch this in my older videos, that whenever you achieve a perfect stretch in the back, that is the most important thing. And yes, if you want a big, wide back, that is very important, but your back will simply remain shallow if you train that way. So I had a wide back for a long time, but when you're doing a, a, a lat spread or something, or even a back double bicep, you might see a good V taper, but not the thickness in the back that you want to see. And it's all about the thickness, especially on the pro stage, that you want to uh, dominate others with. So that's what I am going to keep working on. And if you keep using full range of motion, just like on this one with a full stretch, you will work on the V taper regardless. So you don't have to worry about that anyway. Anyway, this movement is a unilateral movement. And I like to do unilateral movements at least once uh, each training, especially for the back, but also the legs, or it doesn't really matter which muscle group, but that way you can eliminate weaknesses and try to figure out if your left or right side is stronger or weaker compared to the other. Because for me, for example, with the legs, the left side is usually weaker, but for the back, it might be that the left side is stronger. So that really depends on the exercise and the muscle group that you're training, which side is stronger. So then you know if, for example, the left side or right side is stronger, you start with that side and then match the reps with the other so that slowly but surely they will equal in strength. So if you look at my form right here, with my left arm, I'm grabbing the right handle and with my right arm, I'm grabbing the left handle. So it's kind of like a cross uh, across the body row and it allows for an even more natural and deeper stretch and automatically a more natural contraction as well because the back doesn't just move uh, back and forth it actually moves across a plane across the other side of the body uh, in terms of the natural movement it wants to make. And of course, you're gonna see your shape when you're training. Now, this shape is of course a few days after the contest. Uh, you know, all the protocols you've done to get into the perfect shape toward the contest are now out of the system. So what you're left with is your physique, how it truly is, without being water depleted, while being dehydrated. The only thing that I'm missing here is a bit of fullness because I'm still not entirely glycogen filled up. I purposely did that because I don't want to uh, gain a lot of weight right away because that is actually dangerous for blood pressure and the heart rate and stuff like this. Health to me is still very important. Of course, it's bodybuilding. It's never going to be healthy uh, going towards a show, especially in the last few weeks, but you can minimize the unhealthiness by not overeating like a maniac right after the show. And I love this lifestyle anyway. I actually enjoy the meals that I eat. 
A lot of people ask me, how can you stomach eating fish every single day or rice or vegetables? Well, if you eat it every single day, you automatically become better at it. You become more efficient at making it delicious. So I actually don't mind eating those meals. Alrighty, so the next exercise is the alternating dumbbell curl. And, and honestly, even though if you look at, uh, you know, anatomically, or if you look at how the bicep works or the tension on the biceps, this is not the most perfect exercise for the biceps, but it just feels like an amazing movement to me. So to me, this will always remain the basic movement to do for the biceps. And also like, for example, the concentration curl, and the simple hammer curl. And the hammer curl I actually did right after this movement. So what I did is simply two bicep movements after this back workout. You know, doing uh, three or more to me is useless. However, at this moment I mean, normally I like to do like five back exercises and three bicep movements. Usually two curl variations and one hammer variation, but for now I thought like two movements for the biceps is more than enough. Of course, Dexter needs to be entertained when he's in the gym as well. So he actually learns that working out is fun, which it is. And uh, yeah, that's just awesome to see him enjoy his time whenever we are in the gym and he's in the gym. It's always nice to see him enjoy himself as well. But anyway, this is the final set for the biceps. As you can see, I'm keeping my form as strict as possible. There will always be some upper body movement, but this upper body movement is not for momentum. It's to actually to allow the arms to come into a position for maximum contraction of the biceps. After this, I did some hammer curls. However, did not record them, but you know the drill. Okay, guys, just got done with the back workout. As you saw, mostly two working sets with a good form making sure I don't cheat or anything like that, no momentum. So this is the uh, starting point. And obviously after a competition, you always become stronger and stronger. So right now I'm at my weakest and I'll become stronger as I eat more. And I tend to eat mostly clean because with Christmas and New Year's Eve and stuff, I'm gonna enjoy myself and be human again. But for now it's still gonna be clean foods with here and there, of course, a cookie or something. Uh, but that's, you know, I'm not really someone who wants or needs more than that so this is the post-workout meal so golden rice uh, 120 grams of uncooked rice right now about 350 cooked you have 250 grams of codfish and in here we have some uh, pineapple and i actually am going to start eating pineapple more now so i'm gonna have a kiwi in the morning and pineapple uh, post-workout and maybe uh, before bed as well uh, you know, I really like, like fruits, and uh, during the off-season, fruits really are complementary to the other carbs in uh, most meals. Uh, and of course, pineapple, fresh pineapple, has bromelain in there, which helps digest the protein. And before this, I had a way I should shake, but anyway, I'm going to enjoy this meal for now. Okay, guys, with the beautiful background noise of Christmas music, since tomorrow it'll be Christmas, I already want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and this is going to be the last video I'm uploading before Christmas so uh, this is the beginning of the new progress year that I'll be uh, having here as a classic physique competitor but for now just enjoy yourself during the holidays even if you're dieting for a contest that may be uh, you need to prep right now, but just make sure that you enjoy yourself even on these days. Even if you think you have to diet, there's still a possibility of enjoying yourself. Anyway, guys, I just really, really want to thank you for watching. Finally, happy to be back home and to crush it. All right, guys, thank you for watching once again. And don't forget to stay golden.